What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I do work here, lady. Alright, this story's called... I'm looking for your dad, not some punk kid like you. About 21 years ago, I co-owned and operated a small IT business with my then-girlfriend. We operated out of our residence. We mostly did mobile tech support, though we had an attached office just for the business where new clients could visit. My girlfriend slash business partner did most of the mobile work where I stayed at the office, with the exception of a few particular clients who had taken a liking to me. On a particularly hot summer day, this was in a southern state so it was both hot and really muggy, a woman came in carrying a MacBook. She looked down at the seated me. Go get your dad and hurry up. I was very tempted to roll my eyes and sigh out loud. I got this kind of reaction more than I could count. Unfortunately, I have a baby face, even now in my mid-40s. I have been busted by truancy officers three times in the last four years. I must feel pretty good. And must maintain a full beard to be taken seriously. A beard is about half gray these days, so it helps more than you might think. I can't help you, ma'am. We do not work in Macintosh systems at all, I informed her. I'm looking for your dad, not some punk kid like you. Now go get him. Madam, I had had enough by this point and growled my words. I don't think that you understand. I am the owner of this business. We do not work on Apple computers and- I'm not listening. She had crossed her arms and even stomped a foot. Listen here, lady. If you don't leave, I will trespass you and call the sheriffs over to remove you. She refused to budge, going so far as to sit at the other desk, my partner's desk. No, I am not listening to some snot-nosed kid. I'm 24, you cow! <laughs> I shouted. She rolled her eyes, and by this point, I had finished dialing the non-emergency police number. Oi, oi. An hour later, having thankfully endured the silent treatment while we waited, two deputies arrived and escorted her outside, giving her two options, leave in her own vehicle or leave in the back of their cruiser. Thankfully, she chose the former. The deputies were still there when my business partner got back home, and she found it entirely hilarious. At the time, I just glared at her for laughing as I didn't think it was funny then. Damn, fella, you've got to stick up your pooper. I'm joking, but I'm glad you... <laughs> uh, I think it was funny the entire time, to be honest, but I think everything's funny. It's kind of a problem. All right, this story is called Mechanics Own Cars 2. Background info. Whoa. Background info. Father is a mechanic for Ford. Mother owns a 2020 Ford Escape Hybrid. This is important. Father had above vehicle at work. On to the story. Today, my father is dealing with a customer who drove in with a Ford Escape Hybrid of similar model as his and complained that she had X problem, which caused Y issue. Now, my father has worked there for over 20 years, so he knows his vehicles, especially this issue, as he has fixed it for our vehicle. Father explains it to customer, what the issue is, and how he's going to fix it, and she just loses it. How would you know? You can't even afford a car like that. You probably have never driven a car like that before. My father, calmly but annoyed, says to turn around and look at the red escape behind her and lets her know that he owns that vehicle, which he does sort of. She just goes, oh, and walks off. Drove him nuts, but the issue got fixed. <laughs> what the f- who, 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 I'm sorry, I'm turning into an owl again. Who goes to a mechanic with their car and he gives them, who, who, who does that? All right, this story's called, Yes, I am working. Same thing you should be doing. So, the general situation. I am female, pale skin, blonde hair. I work for a family business, construction contractor work for private residents. I am the only female on the job. Boss is my dad, and no, I do not get coddled. <laughs> sure. <laughs> At the time of this event, I was 19 and working to pay for college. We were working on a deck job in state that is hot, humid, and was summer at the time. Think, you look like you went swimming after a couple of hours just standing outside. Ugh, it's either Florida or like Texas. Ah, I hate it. My boss left to run errands, but left me to move lumber from the driveway to the back of the house. 
mostly treated 2 inch by 12 inch by 16 feet stringers and 5 by 4 decking. Now, this deck was also getting a double level fireplace. Basically, one fireplace on the deck and another below it all connected. No idea how it works, but one of the few jobs we don't do is masonry. So the mason, we'll call him Joel, comes by with his crew of four men, three of them I recognize if not know by name. Joel says hi and asks where my dad is. He's currently holding a 2x12x16 stringer. He's running errands, but he said you guys could do what you need. Let me know if the lumber's in your way. No worries. Then I assume he directs the other guys on what the job is. Now, all the guys I know aren't bothering to look at me other than the initial hello and are getting around to work. The fourth guy has been staring at me the whole time with a look on his face. The kind of look that says, I have something I want to ask. Oh boy, I know that look. But usually I get it from guys in the 50s and up. It was weird in guys probably only a few years older than me. Now I take my lumber and stack it in the pile I had been building up before heading back for more of my arm workout. Then the guy I don't know steps in front of me. How old are you? 19. Trying to move around him. I'm paid hourly. What are you doing? At this point, I think he's a little dense because it should be obvious what I'm doing. Moving lumber closer to the deck and saw. Why? For the deck? It looks like he's building up to something, but I'm getting a little impatient because it's hot, I feel gross, and I don't particularly want to be answering personal questions to a guy I just met. I suck at lying. Why? So I can pay for school? Once again, I try to get around, and again, he blocks me. Suddenly, surprised Pikachu face. You work here? Yeah. Same thing you should be doing. This time, he is too stunned to stop me, and I walk around him. Then I hear the other guys laughing. I assume at him. Side note, yes, years later, I realized the slight possibility he was gonna ask me out. Doubt it. However, no way in hell is trying to corner a girl like that a good way, polite, appropriate way, to ask someone out, even if I hadn't been dating someone at the time. Doesn't really matter as far as I see it. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> she's going to say no regardless. Anyway, um, cool beans. I like this story. <laughs> this is clever. All right, this story's called, You're right, I don't work for here, but you're wrong because I do work here. What? So, I work for a company that sells backup power sources for both residential and commercial customers. My job is to go into big box stores and set up displays and represent my company while trying to get potential leads. I am not an employee of any of these stores, but I technically work there when my show is there. Now that you know what I do, here's the story. The characters, there's me, employee, manager, and of course, Karen. A few months back, about three months into the Brovid-19 pandemic, I came to the store I was working at that particular week. Now, normally I go in through the back, but the back door was closed and locked, so I went around front as I had just remembered they started senior and disabled only shop hour. There is a crowd of younger people sitting outside waiting to be let in. Now, I am 30 years old, I'm wearing my business suit and store vendor name tag. So employee let me go straight in with no questions asked. I was also holding part of my display, so clearly going into work. I see a lady and she, like most of those outside, started looking a little annoyed. Suddenly I hear someone yell, Hey, how come they get to go in and we don't? I turn and it was the lady, Karen. I'm thinking she just didn't see my name tag, so I turn around to face her so she can see it and say, Oh, I work here. No, you don't. You don't have a store badge. Karen yells. I pull my lanyard up to show her my tag and say, You're right. It's a vendor badge for the store. Employee also backs me up by telling her I do work at that store. Karen then proclaims that I have no right to be there since I don't look disabled and am clearly not over 65. I just at that point start to walk away and she attempts to follow me in. The employee steps in her way and tells Karen to go back outside. She pushes him. I see this out of the corner of my eye, so to try to de-escalate the situation, I stop and say, Ma'am, I have two things that allow me to be here during the early shop hour. One is my vendor badge, the other is my disability card. I show her my card, my county issued. Now, wait for it. Dairy. I mean, she yells, I want to see the manager! Employee calls for manager, and 
politely asks her to wait for manager outside, to which her response is, No! I want to see the manager now! They aren't supposed to be here! By this time, Karen is making enough ruckus to get other waiting customers to defend us. She still waits inside. Manager comes over and asks me what the problem is. She tells him how I am not supposed to be there, that I don't work for his store, and I am faking my disability, which he is aware of in case of emergencies at work. He explains to Karen that she is right and wrong. I don't work for his store, but I work at his store and I have every right to be there during the senior and disability only hour. He also asks her to get out of the store till the full open. She refuses again and demands to have me removed. At this point, he now tells her that she can either leave willingly or have her removed by police. He also tells me to go ahead and head to my station since I now have 10 minutes to set up a display that normally takes me 30 minutes to set up. I do just that. About an hour later, I realize I forgot a cable in my car and need to go get it. I go out and see a police officer leaning over the passenger window of his cruiser. He is telling her that she can either leave quietly or he can take her to jail. She sees me and is livid, priceless. The officer took her to jail. She was charged with criminal trespass and disturbing the peace. Badass! That's all I have to say. Alright, this story's called... Private property? Not to this Karen. Well, it finally happened. I ran into my first Karen. I'm a volunteer search and rescue canine handler, and my dogs are pit bulls. I've been in SAR for 11 years now and never really had much of an issue. A search and rescue, that is. Every once in a while, we come across someone who doesn't understand what we do. But after a few minutes of explaining it, people change their attitudes and even get excited because we allow them to follow us and see what we are doing. Yesterday, I was working with my younger dog, who is almost ready to certify but still has some minor issues we are training him on. We are working 20 acres of private property out of the 600 acres available to use. So my dog is off leash, has three collars on him, and is searching wonderfully. I'm watching my dog and I can tell he has human scent. There is obvious body behavior you can see when a dog is in scent versus not. He's working around a large wood pile about 100 yards from me when he takes off over a ridge line. A few minutes later, he comes back and jumps on me, which is how he tells me he has found someone. I start to follow him when I hear a lady yelling. By this time, my dog has come back again and told me again he found someone. Still running behind my dog, I come around a corner and there is Karen in all her glory, swinging a hiking pole at my dog. I give my dog tons of praise. I mean, here is a lady screaming at him and waving a scary pole in his face, and he didn't care at all. He did his job very well. Ah, that's what I want to see in my dogs. How dare you let your dog off leash? Sorry, ma'am. I'm with Search and Rescue, and we have permission to train our dogs off leash. No, no dogs are allowed off leash. Your dog is dangerous. Ma'am, you are on private property. My dog is training to find missing people. Karen whips out her phone and starts recording me. You think this behavior is acceptable? Yes, that is his job. I demand to speak to your supervisor. Well, how my team works is we have senior members. We technically have one person in charge of the team, but we are considered supervisors and in charge of everything. We have full rights to speak on behalf of the team, dismiss people for dangerous behavior, make decisions, etc. I am the supervisor. There is someone above you! Actually, no, there isn't. I'm sorry you're upset, but what happened is what my dog is supposed to do. You should ask people before you let your dog run up to them! You are trespassing on private property. You shouldn't be here. What's your name? OP. Your last name. You don't need that. Karen then turns to the two men that were with me and takes photos of them and my dog, who is off leash, playing with his pink pig and laying in the snow. Aww. Do you approve of this? What are your names? Both guys shrugged and said, She is the one in charge. 
Then finally Karen huffed off, yelling, and my dog got back to work to find the guy that was hidden 20 feet away from where this whole thing took place. Later, she ran into the rest of the senior members and had words about how my dog charged her, acted very aggressive, and how I gave him treats for that behavior. They also tried to explain it to her, and she told them to hush, and there was obviously something wrong with everyone in our team. My dog was perfect. Oh, and dogs don't wear vests while working because where we are has tons of underbrush and some of our dogs have gotten seriously hurt wearing vests. Aww. We only use them on roadways or during firearm steer season. I love rescue dogs, like uh, St. Bernard's, those big fluffy frickin- Oh, I love those things. Anyway, um, that dog's great, uh, that lady's not. Your job is cool, so very hot. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.